What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Created Podcast. I'm Teddy Osuna, and today I'm joined by Juan Hernandez. Camera's uh, right there. Right yeah, there. this one's all you. Okay, for sure. <laughs> Some people get confused because I look at that one, yes, and then they're like, "Well, do I look this way? Do I like uh-huh. the first guest that I had was like, "What do I do?" <laughs> and I, but I just lost. Yeah. So this will be your camera. If you want to uh, shout out your Instagram, you can do that right there. All right, my handle is Juan H N D E Z, and that's about it. Juan H N D E Z. There you go. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Pleasure to have you. Um, so, like I said in previous podcasts, this is a podcast of creative people, and he's definitely a creative. I've seen his work. Um, random how I met him, but, you know, <laughs> glad that I did meet him. It's a funny story, yeah. Yeah. So, I get water from a local spot here in Esco, and um, I saw the pictures that were hanging up on the wall there, and I asked... <laughs> Juan, I was like, yo, who took these shots? These are pretty cool. There were drone shots of the beach or some landscapes and stuff. And then he's like, oh, those are actually mine. You know, uh, I do aerial photography with my drone. I was like, yo, that's dope. I, I'm a photographer. I do this and this. And then yes. kind of just went went on like yeah. that. We exchanged handles. And next thing you know, we both know we're photographers. Yeah, because he was at, you were asking me about uh, buying a camera at the time. Because yeah. you, you were oh, trying yeah. to. Yeah. That was way before I, I got the camera. That was like right before I started like doing it full time mm-hmm. or going into it. So, dude, your recommendation really went a long way. Yeah, so you did go with the RP that I told you, Yeah, right? the RP. Yeah, because that had just been released right when I told you. Yeah, yeah. Because you're like, I don't know if I want to go with the R. Yeah, you were like, maybe you can wait for the R5 or just get the RP. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. How's that working out for you? It's a great camera, honestly. Yeah. Phenomenal camera, especially for the for the price point. Mm-hmm. How much yeah. was it when you got it? Um, I think just the body alone is like... Uh, nine. Oh damn, nine hundred, maybe a thousand. That's super budget yeah, for yeah, people trying to get budget. into it. Yeah, and I mean, there's a bunch of like the the seventy. They're like around twelve hundred, something mm-hmm. like that. So I'm like, why not get a mirrorless for Just future same price? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? So, kind of getting going to the beginning. What got you into photography to begin with? Okay, so um, about I think it was like junior year. That's when I joined video production at my school. Okay. So I was really into video. That was like my main thing. And so as we all are at yeah. one point. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wishes every photographer wishes they were a videographer, honestly. Yeah. So I uh started video in high school and I loved it. And then um I the coolest video production teacher and every day after class we, we could rent out the cameras. Okay. So I would rent it out and then take it wherever we'd go and I'd go with my buddies and we'd shoot and we'd just like take pictures and I'm like, Oh, you know, I kinda like this. And what uh, what high school did you go to? Escondido High School. Okay. Yeah, right down the street. Dope, dope. Yeah, so um, ever since then, I've just, like, really liked it. And then that summer when I graduated, I got a camera. Mm-hmm. I got, like, the really cheap little, um, I don't even know what it's called, this, uh, T6. Okay. Yeah. A little Rebel? Yeah. yeah, a little Rebel. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I had that for, like, three years, and then, mm. then I got my RP. Damn. What got you into drone photography? Because, dude, it's just cool as hell yeah <laughs> you still you still flying your drone or yeah I still flying my drone what? i think um i think i might get a new one but i'm still flying the the mavic mini no oh, the mavic mini okay yeah. is that the that's the one that came in different colors right no is it i think or is it, no, is that the mavic air might be the mavic air mine uh, mine was only like uh it's like a 400 hundred dollar drone okay then it wasn't comes, mavic mini yeah. okay yeah Super yeah tiny because i was flying the mavic air for a while mm-hmm. And then I just kind of got over aerial photography. I was like, yeah. eh, that's kind of fun. Because everyone was doing it. And like, right. if you do it, cool. I'm like, I'm not trying to talk shit on it. Yeah. But for me, I had seen it so much because yeah. I kind of, I took a class at Palomar mm-hmm. uh, right when the drone started coming out on drone building yeah. and flying. So I had been seeing it for years prior to that. And then at yeah. once, like DJI just mass produced them for every it's consumer insane, out yeah. there. I was like, I'm kind of over it. <laughs> just so many. Like, it's cool when it was like at the at the beginning, everybody's like, "Yo, like, uh, like a beach shot from the from above. You uh-huh. know, that looks crazy." And now everybody does it. Yeah, because yeah. I remember when Casey Neistat started putting them in his vlogs, and it's yeah. like, "Oh my god, that's amazing!" And then right as soon as he did that, everybody yeah. just jumped on the bandwagon, which is cool. Yeah, you know, great for DJI, but at the yeah. same time, I'm just like, all right. You've seen one drone shot, you kind of seen it yeah, all. Yeah, seen it all. It's, unless it's something that's like, holy shit. Right. You know, there, there are some of those drone shots. Yeah, the thing with that is, yeah, if you really want to be a, a drone photographer, you got to go to all these different places. Yes. You know, you can't really do, you can't be as versatile with, you know, portrait photography mm-hmm. as you can with drone I mean, you can try. There's yeah. um, 
there's this one photographer that I I don't remember. I wish really wish I remember. It just literally it's popped in my head right now. Mm. He incorporated drone photography with models at the beach, and the way he did it was really cool. He'd pose them on the floor, and they do like some real avant garde shit. Yeah, and I was like, it was really dope the way he did it, and then. I kind of tried to do it once. I was like, eh, it's not for me. <laughs> yeah, that's, that dude has an eye for it. Right. Dope. I'm not going to do it. And, you know, that n- never saw the light of day because yeah. I got super nervous. I was like, yeah, right. it's cool. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah it's, well, that really goes to show you can really, you know, go from uh, very trendy stuff mm-hmm. to like super creative stuff. Yeah, that's thinking. kind of where I'm at right now as yeah. a photographer because um, my girlfriend and I were talking about like, well, I haven't really shot much recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, just kind of life kind of got in the way yeah work has been hectic so haven't really had time to set up shoots and shit absolutely and she's like what do you really want to shoot and so i started giving her all these ideas and then she kind of started going on this like whole pinterest thing where she's like what about this what about this i'm like it's exactly what i want to shoot just like yeah. super uh high fashion artsy shit where it's yeah. completely where it's like something completely different from my feed right now right right, right. yeah I, I go on pinterest too that's like where i get yeah how do you get inspiration from. what keeps you like motivated and inspired to keep shooting or like what was something that motivated you to begin with i think it's with the not just photography with a lot of other uh professions you kind of see someone who's at the top mm-hmm. and you see someone who's really good at what they're doing you're like i want to get there yeah i think that's what motivates me like it's really easy to give up too, comparing yourself to other photographers oh for but, sure been there but it can also motivate you yeah. you know like you know what i'm gonna try and be better than this guy I mean, there's photographers that are a dime a dozen. Yeah, know? exactly. So, but being like seeing that person at the top and be like, I want to be there. You know, I want to I want to get as close as possible to where mm-hmm. they are. I think that's what motivates me. Do you do you think you have a certain style of photography you like to stay in that uh, maybe some maybe it's just your own style or maybe you kind of pulled from this person, pulled from that person. Do you have something like that? Definitely pulling from, uh-huh. from different uh, photographers or different inspirations, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's what I like to do because I feel like we all kind of get inspiration. You can be completely original, but that's super hard. But yeah. you can make something original from like pulling from here, pulling from here, and then putting it all together. Who are some of the people that you look in, like two or three people that you look at and you're like, yo, I kind of want to pull something from there, pull something from him. Mm. If you can. It's, it's kind of hard to think off the bat, but there's this uh, photographer I just found on Twitter. Mm-hmm. His name is like uh, Jaws or something, J O S, but um, he's kind of just like trying different colors and different type of things. Mm-hmm. Most people like to. I, I mean, what I what I see often is very like low color. Blo- I mean, like less color than than more, mm-hmm. honestly. But what he does, it's very very unique. And okay. so I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna try and do more colors. Maybe mess around with like the different reds, blues. You know, that okay. sort of thing. Gotcha. Yeah, because I was looking at some of your photos, and and it's kind of um, not your typical style of editing. Mm-hmm. The way you edit is completely different from what I've seen on a lot of people's pages. Oh, thank you. It's kind of like um, you take it and you you mess with it in a certain way where it's like this is what I think this should look like. You know, yeah. like there's one photo that I screenshotted. Right? I kind of wanted to get your uh, for sure, the, like your backstory on it. I was and mm-hmm. like this one right here. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that was like at uh, sunset. Uh huh. And the sun had almost gone, gone down. And I was like, what I do. And is, I'll put it right here for you guys yeah, to yeah, see. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. So what I, what I do is um, I usually like start editing the picture. Mm-hmm. And I like off the bat, I just don't like it. So I wait a few days. I kind of let it sit and then try another way of editing. Okay. Mess, it with, mess with it differently. And then I was like, oh. If I mess with the reds or like, I forgot which one it was. Usually like the sunset colors, the oranges and the red, uh, you can turn it to like purple. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, I'll turn, I'll flip it to purple. Okay. And then, um, and then that's what I did. And I kind of just found a different way to go about it, Mm -hmm. uh, by letting it sit and then like taking a different approach. Okay. And so that's what I tried with that one. Nice. Yeah. What about your drone, uh, getting back to your drone stuff, and um, did you, when you went out with your drone, did you have a certain vision, you're like, this is what I want, or did you, were you just up flying? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I see a bunch of stuff on, like, art of visuals, like, you know, okay. uh, that type of thing, or, like, a bunch of other uh, drone pages, you know, uh-huh. and I'm like, I want to try that, but in this setting, oh, okay. and I, like, I know what shot I want mm-hmm. in the beginning, and I try it, you know, sometimes you have this vision, and then yeah. it's, like, not even close. Yeah, exactly. But, 
yeah, I, most of the time I, I have a vision and then I'm like, I go directly and like I try that exact one. So why'd you go v- veer off from video work to photography? Was video work just something that you're like, ah, it's cool, but not for me? Or like what happened there? It's kind of interesting because right now I'm trying to get back into it. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, I don't know, you uh, you get, it wasn't really discouraged. I was I think I was just more interested at, like finding one image mm-hmm. and then kind of, kind of showing that off. Okay. You know? Some people think uh, video is harder, but I've heard people say photography is harder because it's like choosing one one still image to like convey everything you're trying mm-hmm. to convey. So, but I honestly think video is way harder to edit, and it's like there's a lot more to it if you wanted to make it look interesting. But yeah, I think it was just I became more interested with trying to like put more emotion to like one image. Mm. Yeah. I think that's what it was. Yeah, because a lot of people want to get into video editing or, or just video production in general. And mm-hmm. then when they get to the editing part, they're like, yo, I, I, nope, not doing it. Yes. Because especially the video style of editing that is really popular now with like the super fast cuts, mm-hmm. the transitions, the whips, the pans, like all yes. that stuff. Like it's cool, but I feel it's it has its time and its place. Yes. Because if you watch a movie, you're not sitting there watching whips, pans, on no, like, no, no. And, like all quick and shit. Uh-huh. You know, like... uh. The, I, on TikTok, I'm, I don't know if you've seen TikToks where like people are, the transitions are super quick. Yes. And they'll keep a person's attention for so long mm-hmm. and then they kind of get distracted super quick. Right. And just scroll on to the next one. Yeah. You know, and I've kind of caught myself where I'll look at a picture now and I'll break it down like, okay, mm-hmm. this is the lighting they use. Do you ever do that? Like yeah. break down lighting and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. I break it down and I kind of like, that's one thing I do too is. Um, I try not to like limit yourself. I know you, you see it all the time, but mm-hmm. um, you see like wedding photographers and they kind of just have a certain style and that's like their whole feed. Yeah. You know? uh, but like what I try to do, I try to like, oh, let me try to replicate this or let me try to replicate that in my style and then kind of dissect it and kind of like try and see, you know, what works, what doesn't. Okay. That sort of thing. Well, have you ever done any wedding photography? Would you do wedding photography? I have not, but I would. Uh-huh. I don't. Like I said, I don't know if I want to really like limit myself to that, but uh-huh. honestly, like the bag is great. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> I don't. I don't judge anyone who does. And honestly, it's like. Have you been asked to by anybody yet? Yeah, yeah, I have. But it's kind of like I don't know. I I don't know if I really want to get into it. I honestly, just should you know? Just yeah. you know, it's good money. Because right now, right now, what are you shooting, shooting mainly? Um, what are you? I get- would say. Like I I shoot. Uh, for fun, like, but I shoot mainly for pay. Like, I do like rad pictures, that sort of thing. Rad or like, um, what else do I do? Kind of like <laughs> lifestyle shoots. Yeah, okay. Yeah, could, like people who want p- pictures for their Instagram. Okay. Yeah. And do people reach out to you because of word of mouth or like how does? Yeah. Yeah. Word of mouth. See, at the beginning, I was like. Yo, how am I gonna get somebody to pay me to take their pictures? <laughs> or like, how am I gonna get this much clientele? Yeah. But as you know, like, it kind of just snowballs. Mm-hmm. You, one person refers another. One person refers another, and next thing you know, you have like more people. Have you people. had any shoots where you're like, that's like one of my most memorable shoots yet, or you mm. still think it's like too early for for you? That's a good question. Um, I honestly. No, I I don't think I've had like my best shoot. Mm-hmm. I've had like some of my favorite images, but um, I guess like my best memorable shoot would be like uh with my girlfriend. Okay. When we did the one with the uh, hexagons and stuff. Okay. The purple. Mm-hmm. Just because it was um it was like perfect timing, perfect lighting, and then everything went smoothly. Probably you sh- that. You shot that out here in Esco, right? Yeah. Just some like field or whatever. Some random one. Just- yeah, random field. We were like. I just need like dry grass, <laughs> and then I went and found it. Um, do you have so? Oh man, I was gonna ask you something else, but I fucking no, no I always space out on some of the stuff. No um, I was gonna ask you yeah, how, how how is it going for you business wise? Like, have you found yourself uh, being more creative or being more limited to like what or what people are hiring you to do? So. For me right now, it's kind of hard because mm-hmm. I've had my nine to five take over my life a little bit more than what mm-hmm. I'm accustomed to because mm-hmm. um, of COVID. You know, right, I haven't right. been able to kind of go out as much because before I would work in the morning from five to nine in the morning 
and I would have from nine to four o'clock in the afternoon to do whatever I wanted. Right. So I could go shoot. I can, you know, take my kids to go do something or whatever. Or sleep. Okay. Yeah, or sleep. <laughs> um, so that kind of took me down a different path where it's like now I kind of need to be at work more right. because what we do is we take care of people 24 seven around the clock, mm-hmm. you know? So someone always needs to be there or I'm always on call. So like if I were to get a call right now, yeah. like I, I got to go do something, I got to, I'd have to go, you know? Yeah. Um, so as far as that went, I, I, I kind of put photography on the back burner. Mm-hmm. So like I was telling you even off air, like I haven't really shot a lot. And like, I think this year I've shot a grand total of, uh, five times five times yeah wow so for me it's it's kind of been less shooting uh-huh. like even from when the pandemic started to now right um but what i have shot a lot of not a lot but the main thing i shot was for miss guatemala she really? she i reached out to her and she's like yeah i'm down and then she cut she always put she she has been putting out music mm-hmm. and i shot two of her album covers for him nice. for her so that was pretty cool That's awesome I did that. Fuck was that? That was I did one this year and I did one last year. Mm-hmm. And the one I we, the one that we did last year, thankfully got published in a magazine. Wow! So that was dope, dude. Congrats! Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, but it, yeah, that was one of them. Well, that's Miss Guatemala. Yeah, it's super pixelated wow. because it's on an iPad, so oh. like it's stretched out. But yeah. yeah, those are the images right there. Oh, it looks great. So, uh, for the Tommy's be, behind the camera today producing. Yeah, it's it a great picture, man. <laughs> yeah. So I did that one for her album cover. She That's not the one she used for her album cover, but she used it for promo for it. Yes. Um, See, that's one thing you're really good at. I don't think I've told you, but lighting. It's like you got it down like 100%. That's <laughs> You you know what you're doing with lighting. I still, I'm still i still trying to figure it out, but you know what you're doing. A lot of people have told me that, and yeah. I, I take it in stride. And uh, it's just like the whole, that's the her album cover thing. Wow. You know, the whole self-doubt thing always gets me. So sometimes I'll look at my shit. I'm like, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> Which is funny because we finished that shoot almost like 45 minutes early. Because he, he got the pictures and she was like, that's it. That's a wrap. Wow. Yeah, we got that shot. Uh, and she saw it. She saw like that shot and then the 10 after. And she's like, yo, we're done. Like, wow. I tried to take a couple more. And she's like, yo, we're just wasting time at this yeah. point. Like, we got the shot. We're good. And oh. sometimes it goes like that. Yeah. That's awesome, though. Wow. What about you? Have you shot for anybody that's been like published somewhere? Or, like uh, the the last person I shot for was um, my friend. Uh, uh, what's his name? Benjamin, I think Ben. Uh huh. Um, and he's a barber, but okay. he also wants to like uh, go outside of that and kind of try modeling and stuff. So I did some shoots for uh, for Zara, oh, or he it was his brand uh-huh. uh, his brand deal for Zara, and those uh, made it on the website. So I was, oh damn, yeah. So I was happy about that. That's dope. And um, yeah, but I'm still trying to get that magazine published right there. You know, so a lot of people push for it, and a lot of people really don't care for it. Uh-huh. Like it's I tell people that I'm publishing a magazine, and some people are like, oh, my God, that's so awesome. Mm-hmm. Other people are like, all right, cool. Yeah, yeah. You know? All about perspective. Yeah, uh-huh. it, it definitely is. Um, and even being on Zara's website, that's super dope. Thank you, man. Um, congratulations on that. Like, Thank that's you. not something that should be swept under the rug, right. you know? <laughs> Um, the, and even one of the last shoots I did, I did for a clothing company, a local one. Nice. And thankfully all my stuff that I shot for them is on their website as well. So that's oh. pretty cool. Nice, man. I think I saw those actually. Yeah. I'm not going to name names cause I'm kind of mad at them, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, man. Have to do with pay and stuff. No, no. It had to, it, other stuff you don't want to get. So into? tell it dog. <laughs> I'm going to say, cause they're probably not going to listen. So if you go to their Instagram, yeah. they're, I sent them the video for like for their promo uh-huh. and they, Put it up on their website, but for some reason, I don't know who's in charge of posting on their Instagram. No tag. They're po- no, I don't care about the tag. Oh, okay. They paid me already. I'm chilling. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're taking screen grabs, yeah, off of the right. off of the video. So it's pixelated. It's super pixelated, and it doesn't look good. Oh my god! And I'm like, what? You know, I'm like, who's that's in, yeah. Who is in charge of their stuff? Like that's fucked up. <laughs> you know, like even uh, because that's my homeboy. Like that's one of my best friends. The yeah. uh, the guy, I've known him since I was like fucking 14 wow so him and i've been you know trying to trying to make it he's a dj right and uh they always tag him and the other model and he'll send it to me like yo why are they what, using what this that? yeah they, doing? they have the high-res images though so i don't know what's happening <laughs> they're tripping i really yeah it's it's really weird what is like uh as far as your photography career trajectory how do you see it going for you that's interesting like right now i'm just uh 
I'm just having fun with it. Mm-hmm. And that's what I've always tried to do, just have fun with it. Kind of try and like push my limits and see okay. what I can do. Um, I think in the future, it's kind of hard to describe what I want to do, but I kind of want to just like get to the point where I can do, where I can work with artists, mm-hmm. other artists, and kind of do what you did, you know, do album covers, okay. that sort of thing, where I can be as creative as I can. Gotcha. So, um, Cause you're still in school right now, right? Yeah, still in school. What are you going to school for? I go to school for business at Cal State San Marcos. Okay. How so, much? How much longer you got there? I got three more classes. And I'm out. Yeah. How long has that been? Oh, dude, it's been a minute. It's been like five years. Yeah. Yeah. So I went a year over. Oh, okay. That's yeah. you know you're still young. It happens. You chilling? Uh, how was school last semester or last year? The whole 2020 uh, during the whole pandemic. It's good. Yeah. It was. Um, it was definitely like. A lot of people hated it because uh-huh. they don't like uh, learning through a screen or whatever. But okay. um, I found myself with more time to do what I want, hanging out with my girlfriend or just go shoot more. Yeah. I found myself going out and taking more pictures, so I loved it. Nice. Yeah, but it was uh, it was not really a lot of learning when you go on online, you know? <laughs> yeah. And anybody who went to school during the pandemic could tell you that. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. I had My kids are like the <laughs> pity me of it. They're yeah, like, yeah. um falling asleep and i was like yo you gotta pay attention yeah, like, <laughs> they just have the uh the screen off you know? yeah exactly and, uh, i had to do that with my son i was like bro you gotta turn your camera on he's like, i don't <laughs> want to like you have to nobody wants to turn their camera <laughs> yeah even like it was funny because i would walk into my my daughter's room i'd walk past her and she'd be in class and it was just the teacher's camera that and was everyone's like, just all black <laughs> <laughs> i'm like yo what the fuck is happening no one's listening at all yeah yeah and it was funny because then we had the parent-teacher conferences and they're like, oh my God, it's so nice to see your face. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, they're like, you can't turn your camera off here. No, exactly. Yeah, exactly. What, what else do you expect from, from kids, you know? <laughs> yeah. It was funny because even my son was like, they're going to make fun of my clothes. I'm like, bro, I can hear your class the whole yeah. day. What are they going to make fun of? <laughs> Nobody's making fun <laughs> Nobody's of nothing. Make fun of you. Yeah. He's like, I'm in my PJs. I was like, then go put on a shirt. Right. <laughs> thought they were going to cyber bully him or something. So you've been traveling a lot. Uh, you traveled a lot last year and re- like during this mm-hmm. year. What some of the places that uh, like kind of stuck out to you? Or like, Well, see, I don't honestly, you say that, but I honestly don't feel like I have, uh-huh. which is crazy. But like uh, looking back at my memories and stuff on my phone, I'll see that I'm like, yeah, I actually went to a, to a few places. But mm-hmm. I think... Uh, my favorite trip was probably like uh, San Francisco. Okay. Yeah, we went uh, back in January, and um, it was a lot of fun. Like, I've gone to San Francisco before, but I've never been able to like go through the streets and like have my camera with me and stuff. Okay. So I love that the most. Did you get any shots while you're out there? Just for, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a couple. Um, somewhere on my Instagram, but I actually didn't didn't post a lot about it. Mm. I think I just I'm like San Francisco like pics with the golden grape. Golden Gate Bridge uh-huh. pretty cliche. So I was like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you got to put it out there. Yeah, you got okay. to stunt for the ground. Right, for right. One, I think I time. put them on my story and that was it. Oh, okay. Um, other than that, I can't even remember where I've been. Let me see. What the, my Instagram. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Let's see. Take your time. No worries. Oh, I went to, oh, yeah, Big Sur. That was just part of the whole trip. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then other pictures that I posted just from, like, way before. That oh, I okay. Saved. Um. Yeah, Big Sur is like one of my favorite places for sure. Yeah, that's that's definitely on the list for me. I want to go shoot up there. You haven't been up there yet? Nah. Oh my god, man. How's it up there? It's gorgeous. Yeah. It's like uh it's it's like uh we we got the cliffs here and close to home, Carlsbad mm-hmm. and stuff, but these are like hundred like almost thousands of feet up. They're just like super tall. Yeah. And um very picturesque and just gorgeous. Yeah. A lot of mountains, a lot of water. That's crazy. Uh when random but I just thought of this. What do your parents think of like when you get paid for photo shoots? Because I know um, mm-hmm. for us Latinos, sometimes our parents are like, yo, you can't make a living off that. Right, do you ever right. get that kind of thing from your yeah, parents? They're, they're super encouraging. Yeah? Yeah, super encouraging. Like um, just recently they were like starting to notice that, you know, I was getting more more gigs and more mm-hmm. clients. And they were like, oh, we're really proud of you. So, so that's cool. Yeah. No. They honestly encourage it. My dad's obviously like, hey, you're going to have to you know make a certain amount of money at some point (laughs) are you sure you want to keep doing this and Uh i was like yeah i mean like it's still just like uh still just doing it for fun yeah but uh yeah luckily i have a job where i don't need to worry about that right now yeah man uh as far as business 
classes do you see what do you see yourself doing with the with what you're going to school for is yeah. it just uh at first it wasn't like i didn't have a business when i was in business school so mm -hmm. i was like oh this stuff's pretty boring you know like i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to take accounting classes or whatever yeah. you know but now where i'm like oh I, I have a business and i see where all my expenses are going and like uh how can i invest back into it mm -hmm. and i actually learned a lot about how to manage a business okay um in like my last two years mm -hmm. and so it kind of gave me the confidence to be like you know what i can actually like um get really into it and like let's say i open uh i start an llc right mm -hmm. and then i can have my own photography business so yeah i've learned a lot from it honestly yeah how's that how what's that process like if you were if someone were to come to you and be like yo i want to open my photography business photography business what mm -hmm. tips would you give that person oh that's interesting definitely like what i've learned the most is invest back into it as much as you can you mm -hmm. know, every, all the money that you make invest back into it okay because you're not going to grow your business um as fast if you don't really if you're stingy with it and you're like oh i can do with what i have now mm -hmm. no you gotta like honestly you gotta keep putting back into it um but the main thing too is just like uh putting your clients first i know it's not you hear that all the time yeah. but uh my boss at the water place mm -hmm. he always tells me he's like he's like dude um a lot of these water places like yeah they they have everything that we have and let's say they offer it at a lower price or whatever but like people when they come to us and they're like oh yeah we don't go there anymore it's always because they're like oh we hate that guy like <laughs> he's such an asshole you yeah. know like he's just uh he's just grouchy like we'd mm. rather come to you yeah um and they remember that they don't like when they come in they don't remember like they don't even remember the color of the walls yeah they remember that person that helped them out so I think just like being the friendliest, like most sincere person, mm -hmm. I think that's like the best advice I could possibly give. Yeah. All right, for sure. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, Sorry about that. <laughs> As um, and you were talking about working with artists. Who do you see if you could work with like your top artist? What what do you, who would it be and why? See, that's that's interesting. I think my, well, right now my favorite artist. Um, I don't know if you've heard of him, Don Tolliver. Okay, yeah, I've heard of him. Don Tolliver, like Travis Scott. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of my inspiration from their music and from like the, the pictures that they post mm -hmm. or like their album covers. Okay. So I like those are like the top people I'd want to work with. All that right. style. That's uh that's kind of more of I don't even know what style yeah, to call it. It's trap. kind of it's not even really I I guess maybe it's trap, but rap. Because it's it's a, I I've realized a lot of it is kind of like nineties inspired as well. Mm-hmm. Um, like a lot of Travis Scott's album covers or even just visuals yeah. seem a really retro to yeah, me. Yeah, super retro. That's, yeah. that's the way it is. Like a lot of film burns and yes. um, super, like the film look. The film look, that's mm -hmm. what it is. Uh-huh. Uh, and I, I know a lot, I've talked about it in the podcast mm -hmm. before, um, <laughs> probably that's at exhaustion at this point, but film is really cool to mm -hmm. get into. If, if I don't know if you've gotten into it. Yeah, I've gotten into it before. I've never... Um, had like uh i've always wanted to buy like a, Canon a film one. camera yeah, okay yeah. i have a bunch of like the the, point the plastic shoes? ones oh, yeah, gotcha. point shoot. Mm -hmm. yeah but refillable and stuff but i've never bought like a canon like the metal ones because mm. dude they went up in price by like 50 percent or something i don't know but they went up so much i tried really? to buy a used one they're over 100 bucks and i'm like i don't want to spend 100 bucks yeah well i mean it they're, they're worth it for sure it's, yeah. it's something like i was saying in the last podcast um before this one i was telling the guy that i was talking to um that when you do take a f like your first roll of film mm -hmm. you kind of slow down with what you're doing because you kind of have to think about what you're doing yeah because it's not just instant gratification it's like you take the picture mm -hmm. it's like okay cool i don't like it i'm gonna delete it right so you kind of have to take more time and to, and to think like do i really want to push the shutter right because once it's once i get it developed i'm gonna have to pay for this to get developed yes it's not just gonna be like, all right, I'm gonna let it sit on my hard drive, or I'm gonna delete it, or whatever. Exactly. It's a whole experience. It's oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I have two film cameras. I have one nice. of the Canon ones, and then uh, for Christmas, my girlfriend got me a, uh, like an old Minolta. Oh, nice. And those are really fun to shoot with. Yeah. Um, and I, I got him into shooting film stuff too. Right on. Yeah. I'm just I'm an advocate for film. Like if I'm an, if I can get people to shoot more film, I'm always gonna be like, yo, go shoot film. Yeah, it's yeah. worth it. You feel yeah. like you slow down, <clears throat> mm -hmm. like like I said, I know what you mean about that because you're looking through the viewfinder, yeah. right? And you're actually you're you have to take in you're actually yeah. composing it through the right. viewfinder, not mm -hmm. taking a picture, looking 
at your screen and yeah. then being like, okay, click, click, cool. Click. Let me let me move it a little bit. Let me move it a little bit. Let me see the framing. Yeah, because yeah. you're you're wasting one of your thirty six yeah. shots. Your thirty six or twenty. Yeah, you gotta so put you, more intention into it. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that that's what I feel kind of brought me back into photography because there was at the beginning of the year, mm-hmm. I was just out of it. Like I I thought about selling all my gear. Yeah. I was like, I'm I don't fucking care. Like I'm yeah. done. Uh-huh. And then uh, I looked at my old film photos. And I was like, oh, these are actually really cool. Mm-hmm. And so I picked up the film camera and just started taking photos with it. I was like, oh. nice. slowed me down, kind of made me realize, like, you don't have to compare right. yourself so much to uh-huh. other people. Just, like, slow down, do what you want. Right, have fun with it. Yeah, so that's kind of... That's what I love about it, too. Like, um, recently, not recently, but I think a couple of years ago, I was supposed to take a general ed class at Palomar. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was like history of photography. And so I was like, oh, why not? Sounds sounds a little boring, but no, why not? It <laughs> yeah. has photography in it. And that was like one of the only classes that had photography in it. Yeah. So I was like, cool. So I took it. Honestly, one of the, one of the coolest classes I've ever taken really? still to date. Um, it was like, uh, it just taught us about like the origins of the camera or whatever, the photography. Mm-hmm. And um, I learned about uh, camera, camera Obscura. Have you ever heard of that? I've heard the name sounds really familiar. I'm pretty sure if you explain it, I'm like, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, like, this is, like, hundreds of years ago when they first figured out that, uh, let's say you have a room, right? Mm-hmm. And and then you have, like, one of the walls, you have a tiny hole in it, mm-hmm. super tiny. And it's blacked out inside the inside the room. room yeah. And it's daylight outside. Um, after a certain amount of time, inside the room will be the outside image inside the room projected. Mm-hmm. Uh, but upside down. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like the image literally goes through that little hole and then you see it. And so then that's how they figured out that you could put it in a box and then, you know. And take pictures. Capture it with yes. it. Yeah, a bunch of chemistry and stuff. That's involved. why when the the mirrors on DSLRs, are, when you look, I don't know, I think uh, there's used, you used to be able to look inside of a camera and you'd see the image upside down. Yeah. But then when you take it, obviously it's right. the right side up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't yes. I remember where the fuck I learned that. Because I remember... <laughs> hearing about it but i was like i, I had so much in my head i'm just right, like, right. i don't remember <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's super interesting I yeah understand. um so th- just so just those two artists you think would be like your ideal people to shoot with yeah uh bryson tiller would be another one too okay uh it's like my favorite genre r&b okay what about um favorite style of photography that you haven't shot but you want to shoot Definitely film. Like you guys know that you guys brought it up. Uh-huh. I'm like, now I really want to try it and do a whole shoot uh-huh. with a film camera. Okay. Because it looks like uh like a lot of fun, you know. Gotcha. Just putting more attention into every single picture and then yeah. once you run out, you're done. Yeah. Instead of just doing like you know, because when you edit you're like clicking, click I am the ones I'm the type of photographer that just clicks and clicks. And when you on one. normally on a shoot, how many photos do you take on average? Like a short shoot would probably be like two hundred pictures or something like that. How, what's a short shoot to you? Like maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Okay. Something like that. And 200 photos? Yeah, 200 photos. Damn. Yeah. I I take way more than you that. You take one more? Way more. Yeah, how much? How about you? At least four to five. Wow. Even on like a 45 minute shoot. Because that's just, I like to have the variety. Yeah, no, of course. Um, Even the, the guest that I had on before you, he we were talking about like for an hour long shoot, like an hour and a half long shoot, he shoots up to upwards of like 1,500 photos. Jeez. Yeah, and he just, that's just what he likes to do. Yeah, yeah, there's not one moment that's, like, left. And yeah, because he's, he, he's talking about, like, uh, micro expressions from a person. Because ah, okay. he shoots a lot of models. Okay. Um, a shitload of models. You go to his yeah. Instagram, it's just nothing but model after mm-hmm. model after model. I'm like, God damn, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, no. you, you putting in work. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, but I hundred pictures. Yeah. Wow. Like an hour long shoot. And I've done that, but at a wedding. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's like. That's why it's a lot of work. That's why people are willing to pay. People are not willing to pay. Really? Yes. If More. so, I've been asked because I've done a, a few weddings, and then I'll post the pictures and like, oh, how much do you mm-hmm. charge? And I'll give them a package deal, mm-hmm. and then they're like, oh shit, or they're like, oh, okay, cool, I'll get back to you. Right. And then, and then, then get back to you. They never get back to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it happens a lot. Even um, somebody, I think at the beginning of the year, wanted a, a promo video done for their. Um, like Zumba classes or something mm. like they were doing something yeah. and I gave them a price cause it was like th- a 30 minute shoot, 45 minutes or something like that. Yeah. And they wanted like a 30 second edit. Okay. So I was like, all right, cool. It's this much money. And then they're like, Oh, well I'm waiting on someone else to get back to me. 
and they never got back to me. And then the person who referred me, yeah, he told me he's like, "Yo, they just got somebody else to shoot it with their cell phone." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, I mean, uh, cool, right?" But then you look at the footage, and it just yeah, it's not. The same. I'm not trying to talk shit, right? Right. Because you know, you pay for what you get, and you know, some people can only afford that, which is fine. Yeah. But if you want high quality work, like, yeah, you have to pay for it. Yeah, I was gonna ask. That was like one of the most challenging things is uh, figuring out pricing. At the beginning, when you first, well, I'm still figuring it out. Yeah, you're still figuring it out. Everybody I talk to is still figuring it out. I mean, it's not even a fa- uh, a matter of still figuring figuring it out. Mm-hmm. It's when you get a new piece of gear, you're gonna raise up your prices because yeah. that gear is not cheap. You gotta pay for it. Yeah, like, um, what do you use to edit? Uh, Lightroom. Okay, so you pay a monthly subscription, right? Yeah, I got lucky though because uh, my school they do. Well, with your tuition, it's uh-huh. included all of Adobe. So you get like Lightroom, Premiere, uh-huh. everything. So it's all free. Yeah, but how much is your tuition? Right, it's like three <laughs> grand. <laughs> there you go. And, Cal- and Cal State San Marcos ain't right. cheap. No, not at all, man. I was, but, um, somebody told me that like, yo, look at the price for a parking permit for Cal State. Yeah, oh. I did. I was like, uh, you've heard, right? Yeah. Yeah. Super Four, crazy. Three, four hundred dollars. Yeah, just to park, park there? Are you kidding me? And the, I'm pretty sure the parking is just ridiculous, right? Yeah. No, it's, it's horrible. <laughs> um, yeah, they need to... They need to do something about yeah. It. So abolish it. So that that's kind of why I I think that everyone's always working on their pricing. Yeah. Because it's you know you pay for a subscription, you pay for your camera, the wear and tear of your camera. You know, um, your lens lenses aren't cheap. Lenses are pretty much the price of your body. Of your body. You know. Yeah. But people don't understand that. And I had one uh one model ask me once, and she's like, "Yo, I want to do a shoot, kind of like what you've been posting for my OnlyFans or this." I was like, "All right, cool. Well, it's this much money," and she's like well, can it be this much money and can you give me this many photos instead? And I'll go to your house and I'll shoot there. That way you you don't have to pay for... Right. Or She's like, why am I yeah, paying that much money? And I kind of broke it down. Yeah. And she's like, well, I'll go to you. You don't have to spend money on gas. Make it less photos. And I was like, that's not how it works. <laughs> like, I, I, that I, lens is still like three grand. Yeah. <laughs> people always Even think... Even if I have to drive to you or not. Exactly. Yeah. But people just... I mean, the uneducated person will just be like, okay, I want cheap and yeah. quick yes and then there's people out there who are like all right cool here's the money let's make some magic yeah and those are the people that i want to work with uh-huh yeah uh-huh. some people are willing to pay some people aren't there's some people would be like uh name your price and then that's it mm-hmm. you know, people there's some it just depends if they know like all that goes into it you know? yeah yeah most people don't no a lot of people a lot of clients don't and that's cool mm-hmm. that's why i think us uh, our jobs as photographers is kind of like educate the person and be like yo I get it. It you think we're just pushing a button, right? Because this is what you see when you're when we're in front of you, right? But take into consideration time it takes me to get here, mm-hmm. transfer all, everything, edit everything, right. or do you send selects for people, or how do you do that? Like your whole yeah, process. I've been figuring that out too, but I feel like the easiest way to do it is to send them all the, the all the images unedited. And then have him select which ones you want. Damn, you send him everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, not everything. Like, I don't send him, like, the ones where they get, like, blinking, mm-hmm. you know? Just, like, the ones that, for the most part, they look good and focus. Okay, you know, That gotcha. sort of thing, you know? That they would, that they could choose What do you from. use to send them off? Like, honestly, I was with, uh, I was just using, like, shared albums. Have you ever used that on, on iPhone? Mm-mm. Shared albums. Uh-uh. You literally like just select a bunch of images and then you can share them with the person in your contacts. Oh, uh, okay. And they're like full res and they're great mm. quality. So it's like to, almost through iCloud. Yeah, almost uh, through iCloud. Okay. Yeah, never done that. Yeah, so I didn't know. I had no idea. So, yeah, that thing, yeah, I didn't either. Before I was like, what was I doing? Oh, we transfer. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. We transfer. What do you no. use? Uh, Pixie Set. Pixie Set. Never heard of that. Yeah, wow. so it's this. It it's um. So you can build a website off of it, or you can have client galleries. Like okay. password protected. Oh, okay. And then it'll tell you when someone downloads something. Nice. So what I'll do is I'll I'll have my selects of like fifty to eighty photos, mm-hmm. and then I'll I'll upload them there, and then I'll I'll send them the link, and it it's like a full on gallery. Oh, nice. So when they look at it, they're like, oh, it's it looks pretty cool because when um the person opens it, yeah, it it doesn't look like just a bunch of photos. It'll be a web page. Like a cover photo, and then once you go down, yeah. it looks like all the photos are there. So I, it'll, it'll look a little nice. more professional. You said, what was it called? Pixie Set. Pixie Set. Okay. Yeah. Recently, I used a similar one. I think it was called, what is it called? 
Let's see if I can like pick something. But yeah, I, I I know what you're talking about. Oh yeah, it's called pass. Yeah, it's it's definitely like something good for people to use that um, for a lot of photographers. And I think they even like if a person likes the photos, they can even order uh, the prints, prints off yeah, of the yeah. website, like straight from there, which makes it a lot easier for people. Right. Cause but you share them uh, all the edited pics, like I, no, 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 no. Yeah. So what I, I like, what I'll do uh-huh. is I'll show them. I'll send them the I'll, I'll send them the gallery. Mm-hmm. Like this is the gallery that nice. they, they're able to see. Oh, okay. And then I'll like pick your top fifteen or twelve or whatever we agreed on, and I'll edit those, and you'll get the full res images oh, at back. Okay. And so the, then they go, and then you can see like. It'll tell you, like, if I were to go here, it has a little heart button. Oh, okay. And it'll and tell like, me, like, wh- who, what they hearted and what they liked. And then that, that way I can just go from there and edit on my side. Nice. I got I to gotta start using that. I mean, it took me a while to find it. Yeah. I just started using it last year. Before I was using um, Google Drive. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, Google Photos. People yeah. have used that one before. But See, it was, it was kind of hard. I don't know if people are just, like, gatekeeping this stuff or, like, I feel like it should be common knowledge to, you know, every photographer. Because I feel like most most people don't even know about Pass Gallery or Pix Pixie Set. Yeah, uh, I found it through a Facebook group of photographers. So. Oh, okay. And they're like, "Yo, I use Pixie Set for gallery images and and this and and batch sending." And I was like, "That's actually really cool." And then yeah. I tried it. Um, they charge like thirty bucks a month wow. if you want to have like un, like a certain unlimited storage, unlimited yeah. storage, which is cool. Mm-hmm. I don't pay for it because I'm like I don't have that many sets that I want to upload at the time Mm -hmm. so i just do the free one for right now and then i'll just like delete the the thing after but nice it's a really good tool to have for sure nice going back to uh pricing Uh uh-huh uh when you first started you started low or you started high because i've heard some people start high to like i don't know kind of show that they have a quality uh service Uh and because if you start low people are like i've heard that people think that it's not like the best and it's harder to yeah. gain and to raise your prices later. Yeah. So I don't know, man. I, it's for me, it was kind of weird. So I just, I kind of just put out a, like a price uh-huh. and some people were paying it. It was like 80 bucks oh, nice. for a, a shoot. And then, you know, I was like, it's not worth it. So I obviously I raised the price because yeah. the amount of time I was putting into the photos, I've it was, been there. It, it, like at the end of the day, I'm getting paid like what, $2 an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I just raised them and then even now some people think I'll give them my prices and they're like, yo, you're way too expensive. Uh, you're like, no, nah, not really. And then there's always compared to this photographer. Yeah. I'm like nothing. Yeah. Cause I, uh, again, I don't want to keep going back, but going yeah. back to the last podcast yeah. I was on the guy that I was talking to, uh, we were talking off air and he was saying like, there's people in Miami mm-hmm. or there's models in Miami who th- their job is obviously being a model. Yeah. So for them to get runway gigs or uh, music video gigs or whatever, they'll drop two to three thousand dollars on a photo shoot. Yeah, no questions asked. You know, they and have that, to. Yeah, and that's what some photographers are charging. And I'm like, that's kind of the point I want to get to because it's like we yeah. put in a lot of effort into these photos. I'm pretty sure when you put up your photos for any model or even grad grad photos mm-hmm. you're taking or yeah. lifestyle photos, you put your heart and that whole soul yeah, into yeah. it. You know, and like I mean, you could do uh, you could just press like paste on every single picture from every single edit you've ever yeah. done you know but most of the time lighting's different mm-hmm. right colors are different you got to really edit according to like what so how do you feel about presets talking about pushing edit. i've never used one uh just because i feel like i always look at a preset and i'm like dude i could i could easily do that mm-hmm. with my photos you know i feel like that's a thing people sell presets and people don't know that you could just Literally go on Lightroom or go on YouTube and then figure out the Lightroom settings. Yeah. Because people give it out, give it away for free. But um, like if there's a certain shoot that I've done similar lighting, yeah, I can easily look at that one or just like copy the edits and then paste them. Mm. How do you feel about presets? I don't mind them. Yeah. Uh, I've used them. Mm-hmm. There's some where I'm like, oh, yeah, that's actually really cool. And then I'll tweak it to my liking. Oh, I'm not going to, I don't just push uh, paste. paste and then leave it. Yeah. I'll start there. Like, let's say, um, fuck, I don't even remember. There's a photo. Oh, so that there was a wedding photo mm-hmm. that or wedding gig that I had, and I got a 
wedding preset pack. Oh, okay. Because I thought, like, maybe I should just try it just right. to see what it'll do. And on one of the photos, I put it on there, and then I kind of tweaked it to where I liked it. I was like, oh, it actually looks really cool. You know, mm-hmm. and I used that for the majority of that same lighting situation. Yeah. And then from there, I was like, all right, I can't use it for when they're indoors because it doesn't look good indoors. Right. So I just kind of tweaked it around. There you go. But it so, helps you in situations like that. Exactly. Where you're like, it's so many photos. So you're like, I'm just going to. I mean, people always poke fun and like, oh, buy my preset pack here. Mm-hmm. But motherfuckers making a killing off presets, yeah. bro. Like, it's crazy. How I'm like, maybe I should make my own. <laughs> you could. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty simple. Um, I have my own preset. Like, a lot of people. Oh, there we go. Quick plug. Yeah. Like, I don't I don't sell presets, uh-huh. but I, I have my own on my Lightroom library. Okay. Where, like, like I'll just go to, like, my go-to. Right. And that'll, like, if I want to crush the blacks or bring out the highlights or something. Like, it's just super quick and easy edit for me. Mm-hmm. And then from there, I can kind of put my style of editing on there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, that, is there anything in photography that you haven't learned yet but want to learn? Kind of like you were asked, like you were telling me about lighting. Like, mm-hmm. what do you want to learn about lighting? Like, what, what, uh-huh. what do you see in my photos that, with that with lighting that you're like, yo, he knows his lighting? Like, well, it's just like uh, besides the settings, it's just like figuring out all this stuff. You know, mm. how many how many lights you have to have? Like, I've just recently seeing how some people use flash right mm. um that's set up on their camera right and then it sets it all off and then oh, you get yeah. backlighting and front lighting like oh like that's something i'd really want to figure out yeah i've done i've like had the wallpaper or the, the backdrop seamless. yeah the seamless backdrop and then i bought some lights mm-hmm. but i'm like dude it just doesn't look how how it looks on teddy's you know i'm like <laughs> i want to try and get it right you know uh, just YouTube it, man. Yeah. Um, or even if you want, you can even come on a shoot with me. To, that's what we did with him because he, uh, he got his camera and he's like, "Yo, I want to see what you do mm-hmm. uh, at a photo shoot because I want to take photos kind of like the way you're doing." And then I took him on the. What was the first one I took you on? Was it the Stephanie one? Um, yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure it was. So I took him on with Miss Guatemala, and he was like, "Oh shit, it's actually a lot of work because it yeah. was, it was a, a big parabolic umbrella." Yeah, above. I, I just use that one, and I have some photos where it's like a three lighting, three point lighting or four point lighting. Um, those are my favorite. Those are the more more lights you have, it's just yeah. more dynamic. Yeah, especially like the hair lights and all that stuff. It's just super subtle, mm-hmm. but when you use it, it's just like oh, that looks big dope. difference. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. I even used um. There's a shot of uh, of beer that I used. Nice. And I used the oh the stone one. Yeah. Yeah. It those those are cool. Two just two lights and a reflector. That was it? Yeah. Ah. Wow. So it's uh that one that light, but with a different soft box on it that I have downstairs and another flash that I have downstairs. Yeah. And it was like one of my favorite photos. I was like, yeah, it's dope. It is super dope. Yeah. yeah, look at look at all this gear. And people still like don't know about all this this is like tiny little things that you have to buy. It's know? the knowledge more than yeah. that. Yeah. How I to, mean how to use it, how to put it together. Right. Yeah, because a lot of people, I, if we were to give these two cameras and these lights to somebody who had, knows nothing about any of this, they'd be like, yo, well, like, what do I do yeah. with this? No idea. They, they would know, no idea. Like, even with these two lights, I still, I want to get different ones because of the way that it just projects the light. It's not really um, focused. Yeah. It's just everywhere. So I, I, I'm still kind of working on the lighting setup for this whole podcast thing as well. So, gotcha. you know, I'm still learning as well. Yeah. yeah. What's something you want to uh, learn more about? And, t- and photography in general. Um, I want to get into high high speed sync flash photography. Gotcha. I I I want to get a flash that is capable of it. Like the one I have right now is mm-hmm. isn't capable of it because I want to freeze motion. Like um, oh, like athletes. Sort yes. Of thing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can do it, but I I want it to be at a lower f stop. So right now, mm-hmm. when when I shoot in the studio, I shoot anywhere between f nine and f eleven. Oh, okay. And that's cool in studio, but if I like, I want to go out outside and use a flash. I can't do that. No. I, can't, I don't want to shoot at f nine or f eleven. I want, like everybody wants the, yeah, the yeah. B- blurry background. Yes. Um. So I I, I want to get into high speed sync photography. Cool. Yeah. It's it's hard though. Yeah, I've always seen pictures. And I'm like, dude, I want to I want to know how to do that. They're not expensive. It's just actually finally pulling the trigger and doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, because I've I've learned it. I just want to put it into practice more. Right. That's something that, that I haven't done enough of. For sure. Yeah. And I I honestly have no idea how long you've been doing this. Uh, photography. Photography. Yeah. I think seven years. Seven years. Wow. Six, seven. Yeah, seven years. Seven years. 
Damn. It seems like a long time. I haven't... Yeah. I always say... It, it's it's seven years, yeah. Because I always say four to five, and then my girlfriend always corrects me. She's like, you do know it's more than that, right? I'm like, I don't <laughs> <Yeah>. remember. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but yeah, I've been doing it for seven years. Um, I'm just, like, I, I just put my heart and soul into yeah. photography. I, I love doing it. That's why I wanted to do this podcast where I can get to talk to like-minded people, right. you know? Because how long have you been in it? Oh, probably like five years. Five? Five. Yeah, I, start, I started, like I said, uh, right after high school. So how old are you now? 22, going on 23. Damn, you're young, bro. Shit. Yeah, I didn't, see, I didn't start <laughs> until I was older. And I started with like an old Nikon. Mm-hmm. Um, do you remember the first photo you took on your on your DSLR? That like, No, but I feel like I just took it to the harbor, uh-huh. Oceanside Harbor, and I think that's where I got like my first images. Okay. Yeah, but most of the time it was just on the phone. When I first I got before the camera. Uh-huh. Uh, one of my really good friends. Oh, I'll, I'll shout him out or I'll send him yeah, to you. Yeah, go ahead. But uh, I think his handle's still uh, Kuni Japan. Uh-huh. His name's Ryan, and he's really, really good at film and really good at digital. And, like, he's the one that, like, we had the iPhone 5C, uh-huh. and he started, like, taking pictures and editing them on Visco. Okay. We're like, oh, that's cool. Like, let's try it. And so ever since then, then he got his camera. And then it's, like, honestly, like, me and my friend Landon and him that were, like, a group of friends – then we all did photo. Okay. My friend Landon, he's still doing it. He's up in um in LA and he's doing filming a lot. Okay. He's really good at editing. Um, but yeah, that's where it kind of took off with our phones. You know, if you want to start somewhere, start with your phone. Yeah, I, I'll, I've heard a lot of uh more popular even YouTubers or photographers say like always gets they always ask like what they always get asked the question, what's the best camera to buy? Right. And they always, their best response is like the one in your pocket. Yeah, the one you have on you. Yeah, because you can give someone like either one of these setups mm-hmm. and be like, go take a picture that looks like this. They're not going to be able to do it. You mm-hmm. can't replicate it unless you know how to use it. And there's some people who use phones and they get some like quality shit. Yeah. I don't know if you watched on, on Hulu that new show that came out, um, Exposure. No, I haven't. So it's the is this prem, the premise is, um, it's I think it's six or seven photographers, mm-hmm. uh, and they're only allowed to use cell phones. Oh wow! And so it, I've always had that in my mind. You know, I'd I'd like to see a challenge like that. Yeah. So the whole so like it's actually yeah, they're they're professional photographers, and then um, I mean professional. I don't know how professional they yeah. are. Um, but there's the whole premise is they're supposed to shoot on a. Not, they don't even use an iPhone. It's a Samsung. Whatever the 8K with right. like the weird camera setup, they, they do have those phones have like insane quality, actually. Yeah, yeah, more better than the iPhone. And because um, we went and sh- did another podcast at, at the studio that I normally shoot at, yeah. and he, the owner of the studio, was telling me that uh, there's f- there's flash triggers for your phone mm-hmm. where you can like, like external, yes, no way. So there's apps for it where you can like go into use the app, mm-hmm. and then when you take if you have it connected through Bluetooth, yeah, it'll trigger the flash wow yeah so i don't know man i think i think that's what i heard recently apple is trying to go as far as possible with their like phone cameras mm-hmm. like they're trying to make it as like uh professional as they can yeah but that's so more I, that's more software based uh-huh. you know they don't have huge sensors like the yeah the R's. Oh. they're super tiny sensors you know it, it's all it's all um i guess you would say it's post production yeah because it yeah. is all software engineered not hardware yeah right right but i mean it's just that the leaps and bounds that even phone photography has gone is crazy. Insane, bro, yeah, you, I remember taking a photo on the first iPhone. It looks super well, grainy. <laughs> you guys feel that's yeah. why that's why people don't want to pay prices is because phone photography is so good that they almost don't see the talent in you guys shooting. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. I've I've known people who like they hit me up for uh, grad pictures and um, told them the price. And then next thing you know, I. I see on the on my feed, they just went with their family and they like took it on. Oh the yeah, phone. <laughs> I'm like okay. Yeah, I mean I'll, some people like that. Yeah, a lot of people like that cell phone look. Yeah, you can tell when it comes from cell. I mean, unless it's there's been times where some people have taken it on a cell phone. I'm like, yo, what was that shot on? And they're like, oh, cell phone. I was like, yo, kudos yeah. to you because that was dope. Yeah, yeah. But then there's other people they take it on a cell phone. Like, that was that was on your yeah. phone. You can tell. Yeah, you can t- like you can tell when someone has an eye for it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, that's the. 
I think a lot of people think that it's um, that it's naturally just there, mm-hmm. but it's learned also. Yeah, because you can tell someone like don't don't shoot at this angle or don't shoot like that. Because a lot of models they have their like favorite sides or their like their good angles. Yeah. Um, and even I'm pretty sure with grad pictures, some people mm-hmm. are like don't 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 take my picture on that side. Right. You know, Write out my double chin or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amount of times I've heard that. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't doubt it, man. <laughs> How many, how many on average, or how many times do you think you've taken grad photos? Uh, definitely more than a few dozen. Yeah, yeah. Because I started last year. That's when I decided to do it. Like, mm-hmm. uh, started to start charging people. And ever since then, it's just uh, usually it's at the beginning of this, like the school year. Okay. And then at the end, of course, when people are graduating. At the beginning. June. Yeah. Some people like to get it done super early, like when they find out they're seniors. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And so they do it then. I uh, th- not college. That's like high school. Okay. Yeah, so I've done those. And then college, that's like when it gets really busy. Gotcha. Um, but, yeah, I I love doing those because it's pretty quick. It's easy. Uh-huh. Um, and there's not a lot of, like, editing to g- that goes into it, you know? Okay. So I love doing those. Um, Other than that, is there another style of photography that you – I mean, I asked you about the mm. – the, and you, your answer was film. But other than film – is there another style of photography that you want to get into that you haven't uh, been able to? Um, because I know a lot of people started shooting landscapes. Yeah. Um, obviously you do that with the drones, so yeah. that's cool. But like portraiture or like, um, I don't know. Definitely more like experimental, you know. Okay. That sort of thing. Um, because I like uh, I hate doing what other people are doing. Like mm-hmm. I've always been like that. Just like whether it's been with clothes or uh, like my studies or whatever, I always wanted to try something different, even though it's like, it may seem weird. It's like, at least it, it doesn't look the same, you know? Mm. So probably like something, something geared more towards like experimental. Have you ever done um, macro photography? Macro? No. Cause a lo- I have a friend who sh- he shoots a lot of macro stuff and yeah. it's super abstract. Really? Because you can get really zoomed in on something. Like texture? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I don't remember. He sent me a photo. And he's like, what do you think this is? And I was like, I don't. Dude, it, it <laughs> literally, like, you're super zoomed. I don't fucking know. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, oh, it's the eye of a bug. And I was like, dang, like, how did you get that? And he's just shooting outside just randomly and got. He's like, they're my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're like, what the hell, man? <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. Um, and he got an award, like he put it into um, into the fair uh-huh. and he got like an award for it at the oh, fair. Oh, good for him. I was like, shit. But yeah, that's, um, I always see images where I'm like, yo, what, what is that? And then mm-hmm. it's like a uh, fish skin or whatever. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. That's super interesting. Like making people think it's one thing. But it's but it's completely different. Yeah, yeah I like that too. I I still need to get a macro lens because I'm like, yeah, that actually looks really cool. Mm-hmm. I tried it because uh, I had a an, one of the lenses I had for my Canon mm-hmm. before I switched to Sony. It had like a macro feature. Yeah. It wasn't just macro, but I couldn't for some reason for the life of me I couldn't figure out how to work the the autofocus for it properly. Yeah. So every time I take it, it was out of focus. I was like, yeah, that's fucking annoying. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm gonna give up. So I just stick to portraits and. And all that stuff. Yeah, I've always wanted to um, uh, venture out and try other lenses. Mm-hmm. Right now, I only have a 35 millimeter. Okay. And um, I think the one that came with my camera was like a 20, like 18, 130. I don't even remember, but it's uh, it's like the stock one. So like it's um, it's a zoom lens. I'm pretty sure the 24 to 105. Yeah, 24 to 105. There you yeah, go. There you go. Um, yeah, you can always rent them. Yeah, my my friend just recommended me that I do uh, renting. Yeah, um, because the RF is it RF? Yeah, because mm-hmm. EF it's RF mounts. Those lenses are super pricey. Yes, crazy how expensive yes. those are. And then because they're like three times three times the price of your bo- camera body itself. Yeah, man. Like that's they, why I only got like the cheapest one was the thirty five. Uh huh. Or there's a fifty millimeter. Like like those just came out, right? The yeah, the fifty one. Okay. The thirty five was like five hundred bucks. That's which is, yeah, it's not bad at all. But even that's still expensive. Yeah. Yeah. But compared to like the 85 1.2, which is like, like th- almost three grand. Yeah, like especially RF. Yeah, RF. I, they're just fucking hiking up the prices because it's new technology. Yeah, and everybody's gonna want it. Do you do you like the fact that they can do that? That you can 
change the ISO on the lens. No, I hate you it. You don't you don't like it? He has he has an eighty five G master uh-huh. where everything's on the lens right. and I find it annoying as hell. Really? But he likes it. Yeah, yeah the, the aperture control. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like the aperture ring, and then you can also on the on the actual camera. There's a switch that you can change it to manual focus yeah. or yeah. autofocus. Um, sometimes I don't use the the auto or the um, the focus or the uh, aperture ring. The aperture ring, yeah. uh, but most times I do. Yeah, uh, just because I I find it easier to when I have something in the viewfinder to meter off of that and just hold like just yeah. still look through the thing so yeah it's just like preference it yeah 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 it definitely comes down to preference I don't like it because I was using I he's like oh look I got the, the the new lens and I tried it and I was like I don't like the aperture ring right there yeah. it's kind of annoying because it for me it's it's easier to switch everything on the camera yeah yeah I just right do right everything now. I know where I I set up my camera the way that I like it just super quick easy ISO is one thing boom 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 because mm-hmm. When you're out shooting, you don't have time to think. You just like no. gotta do it real quick. Exactly, and some people would argue that because you don't have time, it's easier that when you're zooming, you could change the ISO or the aperture on there. But it just depends on what you like. Yeah. I know, I know. When I first got it, I didn't even use it for like mm-hmm. the first few months because it's like new technology, so you gotta adapt and you kind of yeah. get used to it. So, like, I, um, before a lot of people when I started shooting weddings, they're like, when you shoot weddings, you have to use back button focus. Yes, that, you, you know what that what is. is that? So on Canons and Nikons, the DSLRs, um, I think it's the uh, the autofocus button on the back. Mm-hmm. Instead of pushing the shutter, yeah, like half pressing the shutter, it focuses there faster. I could never get used to it. What the I, ne- I hated it. I never got used to it. I never did it. But people uh-huh. who shot weddings for years swore by back button focus. And wow. I was like, I hate it, man. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm never going to do it. <laughs> and I never did. I still don't do it to still this day. Do I don't even know if Sony's can do it. They probably can, but I don't care. Yeah, they have yeah. it. Do they? Yeah, fuck. I'm not that, using that it. That little like joystick thing. Yeah. You no, can no, do no. It, on that. it was. A, it's on the joystick. On, on the little one. Yeah, you can set it up in your in your settings. Yeah. Nope. Chilling. I'm oh. good. I'm gonna half <laughs> press the shutter, and that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> that's the way I like it. Right. Um, you're so used to it. You, there's no. There's no point in changing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I've been asking this question for, for my guests. If you could uh, have your like your ideal or dream setup, mm. money is not a like a question. Yeah, what would it be? That's a good question. I think uh, I love Canon, but I definitely have like uh, a Sony. Really, a Sony probably Sony A seven Mark three. Okay. Um, with uh, I think I think literally what you have yeah. <laughs> with the twenty four to seventy. Okay. Just because I like being able to zoom in and okay. then have wide image and then good bokeh, you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that'd probably. Be- I always love hearing people's answers because sometimes it ranges to like super expensive, and other people are just like, you know what? Yeah. I don't, I'm gonna yeah, go something. Like, like- honestly, I have a friend who has the R6 or the R5. Okay, it's so heavy, and he has a he has like the 15 to 35. Oh, okay, the red ring. Yeah, so the L heavy. lens, so heavy, and he he had the money for it, and mm-hmm. so he splurged, and he's like, dude, this is what I've always wanted. You know, pictures are sick, right? Yeah, but. He's like, dude, sometimes I don't even want to take the camera. It's so heavy. <laughs> it's so bulky. Yeah. He's like, yeah, it's like a dream setup for most people. But he's like, most of the time, I don't even take it. Yeah. yeah. So I, I like having something like like the RP uh-huh. and then with a really versatile lens. I okay. That, that'd probably be it. You should probably, uh, they don't, never mind. I can't recommend that because they don't make them for that. So I'm not. <laughs> but I, what I was going to say is you should look into Sigma lenses. Uh-huh. Because Sigma lenses, like, th- that's a Sigma oh, lens. I want a Sigma lens, yeah. Uh, but they don't make them for the R- RF. RF mounts. Yeah. No. They don't make them for RF mounts I'm like, yet. when are they going to do that? It's going to take years. It, you think so? They, they barely started making native Sony mounts last year. Jeez. Like, the the both of the lenses that I have uh-huh. have the adapter built in. So that's why they're so heavy. Like, if I were to show you my 85 and then give you the 85 native Sony mount, uh-huh. it's super, it's half the size, super light. And that came out after I had bought my 85. I was like, God damn it. I should have waited. <laughs> but Yeah, that's that's what sucks. You never know when they're going to come out. No, you don't. And that's what's stupid. Like he, uh, he had sent me a link the other day talking about how that camera was discontinued. And then I really? looked into it and watched the video and kind of read some articles. So For I, people that don't know, it's an A7R4. Yeah, A7R4. I was, I was, I was going to get there. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the, um, they had discontinued the A7R4. But the reason they discontinued it is because they're, all they're doing is refreshing the screen on the back. Really? So they're making it, I, I think this one has like 3 million dots or something or 
something million, and they're raising it to like three point five million dots wow. to make it like a higher res image that you right. can see on the back. Like, who really who cares? Really needs that? Yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, like I'm always shooting off the monitor if I'm shooting video, right? Or if I'm looking at the back of it, I'll look at it real you're quick not, and then. Yeah, you're not worried about the resolution. Yeah, of your like backs. that camera shoots at a super high megapixel count yeah. right now. It's like I don't. Obviously, when I get home, that's when I'll look right, at exactly. it. Right, you exactly. Know? You just use it for a quick look. Yeah. yeah that's it. But I, I always like hearing people's responses yeah. to that. And then... Right. Do most people answer, like, red cameras and stuff no, like that? No. Uh, surprisingly, no. Red red is actually one of my answers. <laughs> I have, like, two different answers that I was going between. Red is one of them. Yeah. Um, But they always go either a can... Like, the high-end Canon. Mm -hmm. Right now, I think it's the R3. Oh, okay. The one that's coming to come out soon, and then or the A9 or the A1, sorry, the, the Sony nice. A1, yeah, because the A1 is like the top the tier top Sony tier, right? one, yeah. Okay, yeah, I don't know too much about Sony, but I if I could get a Sony A1, I definitely would get a Sony A1. That'd be super Thank dope. You. But yeah, man, pleasure having you. Sure. Glad you came on, and uh, go ahead and plug your stuff right here again. Yeah, again, it's uh, Juan H Hendez, uh, Juan J U A N H N D E Z. And uh, yeah, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. There you go. Thank if you want to give Teddy. shout out to anybody, go yeah. for it. No, that's about it. All right. And shout out to Teddy for having me on there. Yeah, man. Anytime you want to come back. Uh, if you want to be on the Dad Bot podcast, because we were talking about that, right, right. you're more than welcome to come eat with us. Love to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. All right. Now I'm your host, Teddy Osuna. You can follow everything down in the link below. Catch you guys later. Bye.